Hi, I'm Robert and I drive with SRT servos and I want to tell you why, but also I want to explain you how to mount them correctly in your touring car. I'm going to show you my new servos and I'm going to show you what's important when you mount it in a touring car. So let's have a closer look at the servo. When you're looking at the servo, I have two of them right here. Um, one for the 12 scale, uh, the M12, and um, the other one is for touring car racing. Uh, this servo is the SRT BH815S servo. You can see it on the label here when it focuses. Yeah, there it goes. So, this is the servo I choose to run. Um, and when you look at the specifications, running it at 7.4 volt or at your 6 volt uh, BEC. Uh, it has a speed of uh, 0.05 seconds and it has a torque of 13 kilograms. Well, this is a new one, so I'm going to open the seal for the first time. <coughs> it's always nice to open a brand new servo, isn't that nice? Oh. And I'm going to show you what's inside. I'm going to put the touring car away for now and I'm going to show you what's inside. So the box is empty and inside the box, of course, you find the servo, but I want to look at that later. Um, you find some nice decals from SRT to put on your body shell and you find the key features and instructions uh, of the servo, uh, but also uh, a warranty card, which is great. So uh, if there's any problem, you can contact uh, SRT servos and uh, they, will, they are happy to help you then. Um, inside the foam, it's nicely packed. You also found, find various screws and uh, servo levers uh, to mount in your car. This is great. But now I have a closer look at the servo. It has a, a nice gold finish. It's the first thing you see when you get it. It has a nice gold finish. Uh, it's a fully alloy housing and uh, the anodized all the edges gold, which is great. I, I like how it looks. Even the, the spline, even the gear has, uh, has some gold anodizing to it. Um, this is great. They also uh, laser engraved some uh, text in it. Um, they also laser engraved the logo in it. There are some nice inbus screws. Uh, so no Phillips or uh, posy drive screws, just nice inbus ones, which won't wear that fast. The servo wire is already black, it's also a great feature. I used to switch and change all my servo wires to get them all black, but SRT servos makes them black already. And there's one with a white stripe, uh, this indicates the signal wire of the servo. The servo wire has a shorter length than the standard wires, uh, so it will fit nicely in your touring car. Uh, it still is quite a bit long, so uh, you could uh, choose to shorten it, but it also will fit like this. It's a, it's a normal weight servo, uh, it's a low profile servo, so it's a, a shorter housing than a, a regular servo. Um, and these low profile servos are uh, standardized in uh, these touring cars these days. Okay, so I'm going to put this away because uh, I already have one mounted in my car. Uh, I have my Schumacher MI8 here and I already have one mounted in my car. Um, and you can see it's... it's Great, it fits great, it's perfectly mounted, uh, perfectly machined, everything works. Um, but there are some important features when you mount it in your car. First off is uh, the angle of this link. Um, this link has to be at a right angle and you can change the angle by moving this point further forward or moving this point further backward. When moving this point further forward or backward, you will make a progressive line uh, when steering. But you want, I personally want, but most of the drivers want a linear feel in their steering. So making this uh, in the center of it will give it a more linear feeling. But where do you need to be? Do you need to have half a mil or a mil band, uh, with it to add? So. The key thing I try to look at is when I'm at full lock, this is full lock, it's about 27 degrees 
inside view lock on uh, any setup system. When I'm at full lock, I want this lever, this link to be at a 90 degree angle with the drivetrain. Or I want it to be parallel with all the other parts in the car. And when it's not parallel, I can change it with adding or removing shims. Well, I choose to run this alloy servo lever. Um, and this one is an offset version, they call it like that. And it already has the right mounting position. So I don't have to add any shims to this. <coughs> the other thing that's important, and it's a bit harder to show you, um, is that you want to have a 90 degree angle between your servo level and this turnbuckle. This degree, this angle needs to be 90 degrees. Um, some of them just point it out straight, straight upwards. Um, but you want to have it on a 90 degree angle so the steering left and right feels exactly the same. I've been using this servo for quite some races now and it's, it's a great servo. I don't have had any failures and it has a good feel, it has a good precise feel. I use it with my Sanwa M17 transmitter and I didn't need to have any strange adjustments. It's just a, a good feeling servo and I've tried a lot of servos. I've run uh, cheaper servos in a cheaper segment uh, of the servos. I've uh, run high-end servos. I've run highest Corose, Futaba, Sanwa. I've all had different servos but the SRT servo I really really like it. It's, it's a good robust servo which has a lot of strength and a good speed for on the track. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you can add them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.